In this video, we'll use Kyle to flash a project to the board and debug it. So if you just search in the start menu for Kyle, it'll load up. And there's been a pre-made project for you in low layer. So if you just go to project and open and then go to the starter project, it'll open at main.c. Now you can build it by pressing this button or F7 and it should build without error if you look at the bottom in the debug window. And once it's been built, if you click on the plus next to any of the file names, you can see the dependencies that each one pulls in. So for example, main.c will bring in various low layer files and header files. If you want to program the board, just click the load button and you should see at the bottom it'll say flash load finished. If you look down at the board now, you should see that the LED started flashing, which indicates that it's running fine. If you want to debug it, just click this D button here and press OK and the program will run into debug mode now. Now we're in debug mode, we've got different options so we can either run, we can single step, we can step out, step over, or run to the cursor line. You can set a breakpoint by clicking next to any of the lines and you can disable the breakpoint by clicking again. So for this example now we'll set a breakpoint at the first line and then run the code and you can see that the cursor goes right to that first line. The LEDs won't have started flashing yet because the first line sets the output pin. To see them flash, disable the breakpoint and press run and you should see them start running now. Now you don't have to stop the processor to set a breakpoint so we just set one and keep the processor running and it'll automatically stop. From here we can single step through the different lines of code to see where the processor is up to. Here it's in a, a delay function at the moment. So if you press run again and go back to main, the processor will stop at the breakpoint we set before. You can disable all breakpoints by clicking this button. And if we press run again, then the LEDs will start flashing as they did before. And you can stop the processor at any time by pressing this red X and it'll stop wherever it was up to. You can reset by pressing the RST button and you can see here that it's gone back to the original start point of the program. Okay, let's now explore the watch windows and to do this I'm going to create an integer called x of global variable and in the while loop I'm going to simply increment that variable. And if we build the code again, it should build without errors and we'll go into debugging mode by pressing the D again. To view x in the watch window, right click on the variable name and click add to watch one. And if you look down here, watch one has opened and you can see the variable x. It defaults with a hexadecimal display, but if you right click on it, you can turn it into an integer. Now if we run the code, you should see that x will just start incrementing on its own. So we're viewing the variable x in real time without stopping the processor. If you want to actually visualize the data of x, you can right click on it again and say add to logic analyzer. And if you just click on this port and press setup, we need to change the value because it defaults to a really large value for its maximum. So if we change this to a more manageable value, we should be able to visualize the data. And there you go, you can see in real time, there's a graph of the variable x. This is a really powerful feature. It means you can graph analog values without having to stop the processor. You can see digital switches changing. You could maybe plot sine waves from the DSP function, all in real time, all without halting. Another advanced feature Kyle's got for debugging is the system viewer. If you go to peripheral and system viewer, you can interact with any of the system peripherals. The LEDs attached to GPIO A5. And if you go to the ODR register, the output data register, if you click ODR5 on and off, you should see the LED on the board start to turn on and off. You can interact with any of the peripherals this way. In fact, the processor could be set up from scratch directly from this system viewer using tick boxes without writing a single line of code. This video has just scratched the surface of some of the Kyle debugging features. There's also a thread viewer, an event viewer, a system UART. There's a lot of different things for you to check out. So hope this has helped and see you in the next one.